Now, um, Leafin in chat mentioned that they believe that with gathering, a person's gathering ability is halved outside of the town. Now, I'm not sure about right. that. Uh, for example, here, Isda's got a gathering strength of seven, which... The way the gathering works is you'll notice that there's one large portrait and then four smaller portraits with the word helpers above them. The first person, or, or rather the best gatherer, is always put in the primary role of gathering from that resource. And it's the same for crafting. They will contribute ten times their gathering or crafting ability to the job. Anyone mm -hmm. else is considered a helper and only contributes half of their gathering or crafting ability to the job, but you can have right. four of them helping. Um, so, for example, Isdar in the village is gathering at the predicted 70 strength because he's got a gathering uh, ability of seven. And in the expedition, if I just move them around, Airedale, with a gathering strength of five, is gathering at 50, which is the expected. So just being in an expedition doesn't half their gathering ability however if they run out of fuel they will get half of that so it's always important to have wood there wood does not affect losing any um health or anything like that it does mean that you can't heal they won't naturally heal in the town or out and about in an expedition if they don't have any food uh fuel if they don't have any food they'll die eventually but if they uh -huh. don't have fuel, they'll gather or craft at half speed as That's a result what I did. of that. And I've sent my um, expedition, they had no food, so I got a little warning. So I sent them back to the village and uh, get, let, made them pick up some of the food that I've been crafting. No, Leafin, it isn't the, gav it, the difficulty setting. I'm fairly certain that that is... Um, I mean, in terms of the expedition versus your, your colony... There are difficulty settings which will increase the amount of effort required to gather or craft, but it could be that you've just run out of fuel. But it would be interesting if you could check that out because uh, it would be useful information for us to have. Yeah, it would be handy. Right, I am done with gathering there. Uh, Vakis has 26 turns and I've only got three turns with the dudes dudes. So I'm going to head my way back to Vakis, drop off the exotic fruit, and pick up the bread. Okay, I've got a got an event. It's time for the Night of the Goat, a feast in honor and reverence of the ancestors and forefathers, the so-called Zodi, or Ziodi, rather. You have done us proud, grandchildren. Now we shall cleanse you of any curses you carry. And if your souls are ever burdened by the filth of dark magic, come to a city we once called home. Seek us out, and if you prove yourselves worthy you may be cleansed once more. The ZOD Ooh. all nod in agreement, then disappear. And Isda has gained a permanent bonus of two folklore. Hooray! Wonderful! Go if you're ever cursed, we shall seek out this city. There we are. Now, that's like a guaranteed event in a single-player game. In multiplayer, it just happened to happen to me. Shelab won't have seen that, but I believe no. if Shelab checks her logbook, log. she will actually have the ZOD mm. quest in there. And Not I believe that. it isn't in there. No. Do you see the ZOD on the map at all? I'll, yes, I do. I'll check it next turn. It might take a turn to, to populate into the logbook or something. So. Yeah, that's quite possible, actually. All right, I'm going to quickly do a trade here. Let's see... Frank. Uh, I want. Oh, I don't need more fuel. I'm gonna drop off all of my resources, vines, the sword as well. I'm going to take all of the bread though. Come with me, bread, and drop off all of the exotic fruit. Only leaves me with a little bit of. Uh, A little bit of turns, unfortunately. I'm going to drop off the meat as well, because that can be turned into jerky or something. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Um, right, I'm going to head back out in the direction I was originally yeah, going. Yeah, my expedition can go out as well. Off they go. Now, at this point, I can make 
various fruits. I can make fruit pie. A well-made fruit pie will sweeten your day and keep your belly full. How lovely. I get mm, ten of I, those. I've got rubbish stuff like greens and stew and you've got like fruit pie. I'm coming down to your place. Ah, oh, you can. And that's the beauty of being able to trade. <laughs> uh, sure. I'll pop that in there. And that is... The ni another nice thing, I've mentioned ways where the game kind of seems like it's just two single-player games that are running in the same world. But one of the really nice things that really does engage both players is the trading system. And as a result of the trading system, the collaboration in terms of research. I've researched yes. baking. Shelab need not research it now, but will still have the option of benefiting from baked goods because I can make them and trade them with Shelab for something that she makes that I don't have. For Basically, example, I can eat all your pies. <laughs> damn it! All, the, all these people coming along and eating my pies. Yep. It's just not right. Uh, right, okay. Uh, no, I actually prefer having that there, just bringing in more and more grain. Uh, we've got 27 turns worth of, of um, logs. I think we're good. Yeah. Yes, actually. Dappling, you can help with the fruit pies. Okay, ending my turn. Cool. Ended mine a little while ago, so oh, we should start. Dear Lord. What's you happening? lose your footing and fall into a really deep ditch. You quickly no. realize you're not alone, and that you've fallen into a viper's nest. The vipers, no. Three skull engagement. Good luck. Good Just luck. kill the vipers. A two skull engagement. Try to climb back up before the snakes get you. I'm gonna try to get climb out. Uh, I fear that all of my villagers right now are channeling oh. their inner Indiana Jones, which normally would be a good thing, but unfortunately. Right, Do you okay. think the fact that we unlocked that healer is it a healing place that you unlocked, and then you uh, immediately fell into Zeezy. some vipers? Yeah, that could be the case. Yeah, is that maybe like sort of what triggers it? Is like trying to make you use that place? Might be. Well, I need to make. Ah, oh, damn it! They were able to play both of their offensive cards straight away. I was going to take out their offensive cards if Are I could. Are you fighting them? Uh, the physical. I'm, I'm in the physical. Ah. And they're fairly high level, actually. I would have only been able to take them uh, one of the counter cards out, but oof. there's nasty. It's a really high level engagement for such an early part of the game. That's why yeah. I wonder whether it's trying to force you to visit that uh, healing place. There's no. Oh, I can't actually confuse any of them. Wow, that's nasty. You can't confuse the snake. No, no, physical. It's a physical fight. I'm not fighting the snakes. I'm trying to do the physical. Oh, you can't confuse physical. physicalness. <laughs> yeah, apparently. All right, then. Well, poop. They've just gone even stronger. Oh, no. This is going to be a rough one, honestly. Okay. See how it goes. And I've... Anbal has already been taken down. But I've taken one of them out. They've taken one of us out. And two of us out now. He's Scoundrels. If fiery in chat says can't confuse a pit, I suppose you can't. Fair point. Fair right, point. it's down to two cards. Uh, I'm going to immediately. Uh, no, wait, that's not a good call. I think this is just going to. I believe both of these are level fours. Oh, you scallywag. Ouch. This is a really nasty, nasty fight for me. Super, it super nasty. It sounds like it. it's horrible. If they hadn't had a piercing attack there... Ah, oh, damn. But they've got piercing and poison, haven't they? Because they'll have fangs. Well, mm -hmm. kind of. I don't know. She really isn't strong enough. I, I, I think I am going to... Oh, wait. No, they've used their tactics card to just buff the other per player. An interesting move. In fact, mm -hmm. yeah, the best move because it's now strong enough to take out both of my cards. Ah, oh, you scallywag. Oh. I've lost. You climb up, but several snakes manage to bite you on the way up. 
Mooglimu and Airedale have been bitten and are heavily poisoned. Damn, better leave this place Ouch. before the snakes crawl out. Well, could have been better, I'll be honest with you. Oh, skeletons have attacked my city. That's not good because uh, I've just got gatherers and crafters there, so we'll see how well they do. Now, it's night time at this point, so our, for the next, uh, I think it's three turns per phase. So for nine turns, or it's two turns per phase, so for six turns, I can't remember. But basically there are three phases for day, three phases for night. And it's either three turns per phase or two turns per phase. So for a couple of turns it's going to be night time. When it's the dead of night, our vision radius is going to be virtually nothing. Also, mm. most enemies are more aggressive at night than they are at the day. So be aware right. of that. Okay. Um, Found some meat over here. Some uh, what looks like rabbits. Okay. Pretty good. Might camp out and get some. Hmm. Yeah, I'm probably going to have this group... I'm going to have to wait for the herbalist, I think. Though, let me just quickly check. Who was it who got the heavily uh, poisoned? Ah, Airedale and Moogly Moo. I could swap them over at Avakis. And I think that would be a wise move. So I'm going to camp for now. Uh, I'll just gather a little bit for this turn. But by camping, my group is going to regenerate um, wounds. Mm -hmm. So even though they're going to generate more wounds, they'll regenerate those uh, the, the lost health initially. I stupidly forgot to put infinite on my uh, one of my crafting jobs, so I can set that up again. Infinite. There we are. I'm ready to finish the turn. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll actually allow my gatherers to gather one more thing. I'm I'm playing very very cautiously at the moment. I do apologise. It's, I, it's I not don't the blame most... you. You're very hurt at the moment. So still, it, it it can't be particularly engaging to watch. But hopefully, people will forgive me for the first couple of turns whilst I just build up and try to avoid any unnecessary deaths because the deaths really matter in theory. And again, that's yeah, one of the do. reasons I actually like this game. So I'm you... going to finish the turn as well, just because I want my guys to gather some meat and they haven't gathered anything yet. So yeah, that's pretty much why I've got the we'll just flip a turn too. over. Okay. Keep it quick. There we are. I've got some nuts, some more grain. Let's break camp and head down here. There we are. It's literally going to, it's going to take them like six turns to get any meat. Oops, I should I maybe not. Them, I should sorry. have them as helpers. Now, Mowgli Moo, you need to go there. Airedale, you need to go there. I will be taking Izda and Dappling with me. There we are. Also, all the bread. Yes, perfect. Okay, now. Currently consuming more of pretty much everything in the in the camp, which is fine. And we are gonna head out with this group. I'm gonna go in the opposite direction for now though. Though I see no point in moving any further in the dark. I'll always try to set no. up camp and just gather some wood or something like that. Yeah, that's a good idea for the dark times, I think, because you you move you don't move as far, do you? And it's a bit no. more dangerous. And Moogly Moo can help out with crafting there as well. Okay, there we go. It's my turn. Hello, Jarodan. Ooh, you come across a small group of goblin peddlers carrying their cargo on some boars. One of them waves at you to come over. They do not look well armed. In fact, they look worn and tired. Walk over. Hello, fellow travellers. I am Crezio, a travelling merchant from the lower lands yonder. He points to a direction, but seeing no recognition from you, he adds, It's a tough and barren land, like most, 
but we call it home for many years. In any case, we had to leave, we dwelt by a river, and a plague of drowned Utpec drove us away. Yeah, these things can be tough, so what will you do now? We decided to try the journey. You know, all that nomad mantra about the road and how we're all part of it. I'm not entirely sure about it. I grew up in an orcish settlement, with science and houses and all. And to have to live like this now? Eh. But you know how it is. You find a partner, you fall in love, and here you are, on the road. In any case, we were interested... Uh, I imagine... Oh, can we interest you in an exchange of goods? Why, well, yes, you can. Goes for exchange, perhaps. What do you have? Uh, let's see. The Goblin Shrugs. Well, in all honesty, not so much. We can trade one simple weapon. We don't have the manpower to wield it anyway. But we'll only trade that for fruit and herbs to keep us healthy. Or some leather and some animal bones. We had us some good hunters a while back. We'll trade that for some metals. Or we can trade something for a blessing from our shaman. But you'll need to give us food, wood, and some herbs. It ain't easy for her to do. She will mark two of you with a good fortune for the road. Nice. So, what interests you, and what can you trade? No, we have nothing. I've got nothing that I can trade with. Um, there are three options unavailable because I've got none of the things they want, or I can just attack them. But I'm going to say, sorry, we have nothing to spare. Perhaps next time, then. Farewell. And that's it. But I get two EXP for that. I actually had a, a, an event as well popped up oh. at the same time <laughs> so i've got a ghost of a hanged man is seen in your village haunting your people's dreams Ooh. he's seen coming always from the same direction and returning there after several hours of haunting your people wake uneasy every night and some become cursed your scouts soon mark a possible location of the ghost's home okay perhaps investigating it will stop the haunting i am going to say because that's the only option i have okay and that's it Right, so now we've got um, a hanged man. Yeah, I've just seen it pop up on the map. I'm actually heading in that direction. And I apparently have been attacked by snakes. Where? Seven oh, I see. Warped snakes. Yeah, I see. How many? Seven. Oh wow! <laughs> Press F to pay respects. Yeah. That is a lot for a four, four person uh, small dead? expedition. Uh, I doubt it. But you're going to be in a rough way. Seven is a lot. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's see what I can luck. do. Okay, the snakes are dead. Um, Renard has two wounds and Fatoris has two wounds. Okay. So I'll just leave them camped for a turn or so. Yeah. All right, okay. What did I just get? I got some wood and I got some grain. Very well. All right, the dudes, dudes. To decamp and be on our way. I can barely see anything. Like it's dead night now. I can see nothing yeah, but there's... the tile that I'm on. There's <laughs> fog everywhere. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna stay camped sure. and stay doing the same thing, so I'll just end the turn, I think. Okay. I'm gonna go and check out the the hanged man. Ooh, good. Right. You find the ruins of what must have been a small settlement, but it looks abandoned for at least a decade. You see the hanged man floating aimlessly, wailing at the sky. The souls of those who died of hanging, especially self-inflicted, are known to become damned like this, but there could be a way to help. Mm. Uh, I can choose to look for clues of what happened to the hanged man, or nah, the best way to get rid of the ghost problem is good to steal. Attack! No, we're going... See if we can help the hanged man. Oh, they meanie. Like, just attack the ghosts. Don't try and help them out of their eternal anguish. You look around the abandoned settlement and you find several skeletons of people with their heads severed as well as many funeral pyres that look very makeshift and rushed. At the centre of the village, you discover an oak tree with the hanged man's skeletal body still swinging from a branch. I can choose to search the body or take the body down before checking it. I'll take it down before checking it. Priorities. As you search the body, the ghost appears again, but this time without the noose around his neck. Instead, you see a well-built middle-aged man in a wide-brimmed hat with a large book and a crossbow at his side. The ghost seems much more coherent now as it speaks to you. So you've come. Good. Are you the one that cursed our people? 
So, uh, how many people got cursed in your village, by the way? Um, I don't know. I need to go and check that, don't I? Okay. You've ended your turn it's now. It's the end of the turn. I ended the turn, but yeah. I'll check next time. Uh, yes, we've come. You haunted our village for many nights now, and we seek to release you from this fate. Well, not my village, but, you know, a village of a friend. It was not me. Well, not strictly. I can only hold this form for a short time. Soon I will revert back to the anguished deformity that is the hanged man. Driven by instinct alone, I will seek out life and haunt it, desperately trying to seek aid. Many would have slain my spirit but now. My thanks to your patience. Yes, well, we did think about killing you, but it seemed rather redundant when it comes to ghosts, and then there is the <laughs> curse you left. What good is killing a ghost anyway, eh? What happens to you guys if you're defeated? Uh, sure, I'll say, well, yes, we did think about killing you. See, this is what I always think. Undead and, and ghosts and things, and then you're going around killing them, and it's like... What, How does what? one kill? That was he's already How dead. kill... Yeah, it's dead. What's, what's going on there? Indeed, it is somewhat redundant for you. I have no true answer for what happens to us, except that we come back with less and less of ourselves left. Every time we're slain, we lose a part of our souls until there's nothing but an angry shell left. Damn, that's bad. So what happens if you get help, is the first option. All right, enough sharing. How do we help you get the curse off our people? Or whatever, ghost, we want the curse taken off, or you will lose many pieces of yourself. Uh, I'll go with the first one. If you find a way to release my spirit, well, before the darkness, my soul would have travelled through the roots of the cosmic tree into the underworld, where it could rest in peace. Now, well, at least I won't be an angry spirit tormenting people, I think. Okay, so how do we help you and how do we help our people with the curse? I'm afraid I don't know for sure how to lift your curse. I'm fading again and soon will become the hanged man. So I will tell you this. Read my diary and find a way to rest my spirit. Or find another way to banish me from this fate. If you do, I promise to try and lift the curse. It looked like he wanted to say more, but his ghostly body dissolved and changed back into the hanged man. I can just attack the hanged man at this point, or look for the diary he spoke of. Look for the diary. You've got to investigate. Okay. Inside the man's coat pocket, you find a note, or rather what looks like a page torn out of a diary. I can skim through or read carefully. I'll read carefully. The curse of the Striga takes hold quickly. Within days, I saw signs of these good people falling to the darkness. Only I knew what had to be done. The gods helped my soul for it. I had no other recourse but to kill those who were taken and those who stubbornly stood in my way. I had hoped to finish the job and return to you, my daughter. But, alas, I can feel the curse upon my soul. I can hear the voice of my soon-to-be mistress calling me at night, and every night the voice becomes sweeter. Soon I will not have the will to resist, so I must act now, even knowing my, my soul will be damned amongst the wretched. If you shall ever find this place, I needed you to know my true fate. Check for any other information. As you examine the rope, you see it was weaved with silver, and on the ground you see a mm. pentagram drawn with rock salt and poppy seeds, or at least that's what they could have been. All known repellents for the dark magic and the creatures of the night. The hanged man appears next to you and points to a map attached to the page. You see several settlements marked and one sign signed home. Take the map. Okay. You remember the book Ooh. and crossbow on the ghost, and so you search for it near the body. You discover both objects buried under a pile of stones. From your knowledge of folklore, you remember that the hanged man's noose can be a strong amulet, and you also know that the poppy seeds found in the man's bag may come in handy in many rituals. You gather up the goods. Now that's pretty interesting. Um, mm. I think that was based on the fact that some of the people in my party had folklore skill, so they were able oh, right. to divine that. So I've got oh, that's really cool. poppy seeds, which are a resource. I've not you picked up the poppy seeds before. from the pentagram. Yep, and Very nice. the rope and a crossbow. Uh, the dappling and ambal have gotten blessing of willpower for twenty turns, uh, or or plus twenty willpower for x amount of turns. Uh, no, five willpower for a set number of turns. So they've got plus five will for twenty turns, and they've both gained folklore as well. Uh, lay the body to rest, then leave. 3 EXP and 1 research. 
Very that nice. was a very long uh, uh, event. Sorry about that. Uh, That's all right. A new position for the hangman has shown up on the map as well, but I'm going to camp at this point and see if I can't gather up some herbs, since herbs are generally pretty good for healing. Also, if you want herbs, I've got them coming out. Yeah, they. I've got loads of them. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. Thank um, you. Tons and tons and tons, because they naturally spawn in my village. Okay. I've also got a crossbow, which is fantastic. I'm going to give that to Anbal, so that they've got even more ability to support from the tactic side of the deck. Uh, crossbow gives range damage, which in a fight is... You can add your Ooh. range damage to someone else's damage. Ooh. So it's a way of really drastically increasing the damage on a card. And this crossbow is range damage 7, so you have which a is amazing. It's like the boss and you need to put a load of damage yeah. onto it in one go. Exactly. That's the thing yeah. for it. Cool. Okay, ending my turn there. And, and I've been encountered. I've moved, I see. Damn it. I've, I've had an encounter. I'm so sorry. <laughs> There's so much waiting on ah. your side because of this. <laughs> One unliving corpse and two broken skeletons. Let's begin the combat. And awesomely, Ambal is in the tactics deck, so she can add their strength. Uh, though that being said, I'm not sure I would want it to. Um. Huh. It's quite interesting. One thing Meta Celine was just saying that if someone didn't have a microphone, this would be almost impossible to play together because there's no chat. I can't see. No, any there, chat is, here. there is no no means to actually chat. You're you're very very right there. Um, okay, what I'm going to do. Huh. I was going to play Ambal or have Ambal add their strength to Isdar. However. I think a better way of doing this is to have Ambal use fast action on Dappling. So Dappling acts first, and they have 25 damage, which will kill the first Unliving Corpse in one go. Then I am going to shield Isdar, so Isdar can take a few knocks from the Broken Skeletons. There we go. And then the Broken Skeleton will die on the next turn. Ah, oh, is that almost finished off the enemy, but it survived with one no. hit point. Never mind. Ambal can be played, and they've got a piercing weapon, so they'll apply damage in the first round. And that's it. We've won the fight straight away. Fantastic. Well done. That got, was a nice quick fight. Yeah, got a Pavis, and also some... Well, that's actually a good shield. Weighs a fair bit, but I'll keep it and see if someone else... Really? I've got another encounter? Oh my lord! Another unliving corpse of two broken skeletons! <laughs> you know what though? It's going to be easy because when I edit this I can just cut this whole bit out. <laughs> uh, that's true, actually. Just go, um, oh, go on. Keep and play. I play first. Okay. So sorry though. That's <laughs> okay. But it would just be so nice to see what's going on, eh? Um, yeah, well that's the thing. It would be really nice to get that. Uh, I am going to play... Yeah, sure. Play this card. Then... I'm going to play... You. Pull them down. Um... And for those asking about whether I'm streaming, I unfortunately don't have good enough internet to stream this at the moment. So, sorry that you can't see my side. Um, if you do want to see my side, it will be going on my YouTube channel. Oh yeah, that's going to hurt. Oh, whew. Death has been avoided. Alright, I've won this, but unfortunately, Ambal wasn't as fortunate this time, and he's going to have a bunch of wounds. And that is, that is quite, quite a pain, but oh well. Okay, there we go. And you as well. Then confused skeleton. There we are. I win. Well done uh, again. Unfortunately, Ambal is heavily wounded and close to death at this point. So that's... Ouch, yeah. That many encounters in a row is kind of tough. Yeah. 